All right, so I wanted to make this video about uh, this particular problem, uh, headlight problems on this 2011 Mazda 3. So that way anybody else who has the same issue can uh, hopefully replace the bulbs themselves fairly easily without having to go to the staler ship and hopefully avoid some of the small mistakes that I made whenever I did it myself. Um, first of all, you should note that uh, according to the owner's manual, as I'm sure y'all have read, the xenon bulbs that this takes, this is the GT edition, the xenon bulbs that it takes run at a very high voltage, which comes from the, the ballast. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not mechanically inclined, or if you are uh, unfamiliar with how electricity works, this may not be the job for you. It might be worth taking to somebody. However, if you have even a modicum of mechanical ability, and if you understand the general principle of don't go poking your fingers where you don't know what's in there, uh, you should be able to do this job yourself with fairly minimal hassle. So, first thing to note, if one of your headlights goes out, it may not be the bulb. Um, before you go buying anything, you want to test. Because it could be the bulb, or it could be the ballast, or potentially could be the wiring harness here. Uh, that's something that <clears throat> the service manual for this car notes, and I would recommend anybody who does this job to look up the service manual for this model car and read it, uh, the particular section on replacing these headlight bulbs before you do the job yourself, so that way you can get a general idea of what all is involved. Um, in order to get to the headlight assembly in the first place, you do have to drop the bumper, but you don't have to take it all the way off. And it's very easy to do. It's much less intimidating than it looks. Um, there's a few bolts here, which connects in there. A little screw there, and some pop rivets. Excuse me, that was a pop rivet there, I believe, and then the screw there. One or the other. Um, you'll see it on your car. A couple more pop rivets along here. Another little screw and another little pop rivet. And around on the wheel well, there is a little screw here with a 8 millimeter hex head. Very easy to take off. Same on both sides. You don't have to unclip the bumper from the bottom or do any of that, especially if yours is like mine and it's already kind of snapped along some of those points because you've hit curbs or, <laughs> um, yeah, the, the curbs and parking spaces. So uh, once you get those bolts removed, you can pop those clips out from here. Just grab the edge and pull it out. Do the same on both sides and the bumper will drop. Um, from there, to remove the headlight assembly itself, there's a 10 millimeter bolt there. Um, actually, I lied, it's in there. 10 millimeter bolt there, there, and right there. You take those out and you can remove the headlight assembly by pulling it straight forward. There's a couple of little indexing pins, one here that goes straight back and another indexing pin right here that slots in there. Unclip this wiring harness here. Uh, it may take a little bit of force. You may need to use some pliers or something to press down on this and then pull it out. Pull the headlight assembly straight out. Once you've done that, you can take a look here. This is the door to access the headlight bulb itself. All you have to do is read the directions on the thing, twist it in the direction that says open, it'll pop out. Once you get in there, once you get in there, you'll see this thing here. This is the connector from the ballast to the bulb. All you have to do is twist it and it pops right off. You can see the bulb there, which is held in by those two little wire clips. Pop those out and you can remove the bulb. When you remove the bulb, Make sure to hold it by the base 
and do not touch the glass. The bulb operates at high temperatures. The body oils on your fingers. Uh, if they get on the glass when it's running, those will heat up and can potentially cause the bulb to explode. So touch it only by the base. So before you go buying anything, you want to test what you already have, especially if you have one headlight bulb that is currently working. So um, take your working bulb and put it in the non-working assembly and see if it's if it works there. If it works in that assembly, you know it's the bulb that's the problem, and you can buy the bulb replacement. Don't bother getting the aftermarket Sylvania ones or what have you that are, uh, at the time I'm recording this in March 2023, those bulbs cost 130 bucks. They're D2S bulbs, xenon bulbs. They are expensive. Don't bother with those. The bulbs that are in there from the factory are made by Philips. You can buy them on Amazon just by searching Philips D2S. I got these for 46 bucks a piece, at, again, at the time of the recording. Now, I made a mistake. I thought it was the bulb that was the issue. I didn't test it before I bought the bulbs. However, when I got the bulbs, and I put the one in the unit here that wasn't working, it still didn't work. Why? Well, I did a little bit of testing. I connected the thing back together, uh, plugging the wiring harness there into here and laying the headlight assembly out. And I pulled this connector off of the ballast. This is the ballast. This is the unit that ramps up those high voltages and supplies that power to the bulb itself. I pulled that connector off and used a multimeter to test it. Um, I flipped the headlight switch on and tested from one terminal of that port or uh, <clears throat> of that connector to the other. It's a 12 volt connection. If you're getting 12 volts across that connection from the red wire to the black wire of that connector, it's not the power supply that's the problem. In other words, the wiring harness is fine. If you're not getting that voltage at that connector, there may be a short somewhere in the wiring harness here, or it could be the fuse. The fuses are, for the bulbs themselves, are in the engine fuse block there. You'll see which ones they are by looking at the fuse map on the inside of the cover and by checking the owner's manual. Pull the fuses, look at them, see if they're burnt out or blown. You'll be able to see that very clearly if the um, wire in the middle of the fuse is broken or is scorched or something else like that. If that's the case, replace the fuse. I believe they're 15 amp fuses, but you'll see what they are. Um, replace that, test again, see if you still got power or see if you still don't have power rather. If the fuse is fine and you still don't have power of that connector, it's probably the wiring harness there. In which case, that's going to be a bad problem for you because as far as I can tell, they don't make them anymore. So you'll have to jigger that together somehow, and good luck to you. <clears throat> anyway, um, from there, if you are getting 12 volts at that connector, and yet, with a confirmed working bulb, your the headlights still aren't working, you know it's the ballast, because that's the only other element in this system for that xenon bulb. In which case, eBay is your friend. Go up there, um and find the part number for this uh, ballast. If I remember, I'll put the model number of the ballast in the description of the video. So that way you can copy that, pop it into eBay, and find a working ballast that fits. This one, uh, well, it's in that headlight now, but the ballast cost me uh, 30 odd bucks. Not expensive if you buy secondhand. If you buy it from the dealership, the a new one will run you something like 400. Obviously, buy used whenever you can. Um, less garbage in the landfill, hopefully, and way cheaper for you. So, get a new ballast. <clears throat> if you've traced it down that the ballast is the issue, get a new ballast and wire it in. 
It's not hard to do. You have to pull those three screws there. And when you do, you'll see that the ballast is a unit, something like this, with a little connector on the back. There, forgive me while I put this in. A little connector on the back, and this little clip which holds that wire down. The little screw that screws it in there. To replace the ballast, you have to disconnect that clip there, and then open up the back where the bulb is, pull this out, and to put the new one in, just feed the wire back in from the bulb port, which again, the bulb port is back here, feed that wire in. There's a little clip in there which you can't really see on video, uh, at least it's hard. There's a little clip in there that holds it in place, pass the wire around at the gap, around through to here. You'll see it pop up in the port there. Make sure you've got it there. Tuck it into the clip from this side. And here there's a little clip. When you take the ballast out, note how it comes out. Note how it's, there's a little clip that it's wrapped around. Note how that's set. Take the wire out, or uh, feed the new wire in, wrap it around, connect it to the back side of the ballast, screw the ballast back in, and put the whole headlight back in place. You don't have to bolt it in place yet. You can just connect the clip there, test it with a confirmed working bulb, see if it works. If it doesn't, well, then it's the bulb too, and gotta get that. Um, again, learn from my mistake, test the ballast first, because it could be the ballast. In my case, the issue was that there was a little bit of condensation in the lamp here. And the ballast is right at the bottom of that lens assembly. When I took the ballast off, there was moisture there. Um, like liquid water, not just a little bit of condensation, but liquid water. Your headlight has some little ports here and here capped off with these little rubber caps to let moisture out. Um, they should be if I understand correctly, they should be semi-permeable as they are to let any moisture out that gets in. Mine, for whatever reason, was plugged up. So I pulled that little plug off there and shook out a good, shoot, maybe, maybe an ounce. No, less than that. Maybe half an ounce, quarter of an ounce of liquid water. Shook that out, popped it back in, put the ballast in, reconnected it, and it worked. Test your ballast first. Make sure that, that make sure that it's the bulb. If it's the bulb, that's the problem. Make sure of that. If it's the ballast, it's the problem. Make sure of that before you go out and buy anything, because otherwise you'll be like me and out seventy bucks that you didn't have to be out. Um, and then to reassemble everything, it's very easy. It's just the reverse steps of what you did to take it all apart. Um, it can be worthwhile when you're taking it apart to make a video. Um, of which screws go where, so that way you can remember when it comes time to put it back together, but it's pretty self-explanatory, it's not too hard, pop it all back together and you'll be good to go. Um, if you all have any questions about the process or um, any recommendations for how to do it better, more safely, more efficiently, be sure to leave a comment below the video and I'll try to engage with as much as I can. Um, Oh, and I forgot to mention, but I'm indebted to uh, a video from another fellow, uh, him detailing his own process for replacing these headlights. I'll link that below as well in the description, so that way you all can uh, go back and watch that video yourself. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you all if you have the same issue. Um, and if you run into any problems while you're... Um, Replacing your bulbs or diagnosing the issue, let me know and I'll try to respond to comments. Thanks.